Hello. In this video, I'll be teaching you how to use multiplication to generate or to make equivalent fractions. Just as a quick review, remember the, num the numerator is the number on top of the fraction, which shows how many parts. If it's an area model, maybe it's the parts that are shaded or the part of the whole that you're talking about. And the denominator is the number on the bottom, and it shows how many parts are in a whole whatever whole group you're talking about, or a whole picture, or whole, whole, um, whole region, something like that. Let's take a look at a first example. Um, okay, we're going to write two equivalent fractions using multiplication. So we're going to start with a fraction. Um, we'll start with, let's start with one-half. And we'll draw a picture of one-half. We'll use a circle for this example. One-half and we'll shade one half of this circle here. So this fraction, this circle is shaded one half. One out of two parts has been shaded. Now, I can use multiplication to get more parts in the same hole. Maybe I want twice as many parts in my hole without changing the size of the fraction. I'm going to multiply my numerator by two and multiply my denominator by 2, and we'll see, I'm going to change my color here, that we will get 1 times 2 equals 2, and 2 times 2 equals 4. So now I have twice as many parts in my hole and twice as many parts that will be shaded. Let's see what that would look like. So if I drew a circle, let's say, um, start with my one-half again, but then to show an equivalent fraction to make it two-fourths, I'll just cut it this way. Cut each of my parts in half, and now you can see the shaded area here in two-fourths is the same, as, same amount as one-half. And I could do this further. Maybe I want to have uh, twice as many parts again. So I'll use multiplication. I'll have twice as many parts again, times two, and twice as many parts in my hole. And we'll switch the color one last time here. On my, nu my numerator, two times two is four, and four times two is eight. So four eighths is also a fraction that's equivalent to two fourths, and it's equivalent to one half as well see what that would look like. Again, start with my circle. I will shade one half. Now remember, when I wanted twice as many parts, I would divide my two parts in half. And then if I want twice as many parts as my four parts, I will divide each of those in half. Ah, and there we go. You can see we have one, two, three, four parts shaded out of four, five, six, seven, eight. Four out of eight. So I might write as a summary, so you pick a different color here, that one half is equivalent to two fourths, and it's also equivalent to four eighths and I've written two fractions that are equivalent to one-half. Let's try that with one other example. Um, another way you might do that is you start with whatever fraction you're going to write. Let's, let's say the fraction is three-fourths. Okay, and if, again, I can use a multiplication relationship to um, get an equivalent fraction. Maybe I'll multiply my numerator by three and my denominator by 3. As long as I use the same multiplication relationship for my numerator and for my denominator, I'll get an equivalent fraction. In this case, 3 times 3, 9, and 4 times 3 is 12. So 3 fourths is equivalent to 9 twelfths. Maybe I'll write another one for 3 fourths. I'll write 3 fourths again. And maybe this time I want 5 times as many parts and the parts would be five times as small also. So I'll multiply my numerator and my denominator by five. 
So I'll, three times five, I'll have 15 parts that maybe are shaded or that I'm discussing at that time. And four times five, I'll have 20 parts in the whole. So I'll have 20 parts in the whole. They're actually five times as small as the fourth that I started with. But again, as long as you use the same multiplication relationship with the numerators and denominators, you'll have an equivalent fraction. And so I might do as a, as a quick summary, let's put these Let's put these together real quick. Yeah, a little smaller so I can move those up. Yeah, up there. That'll work. Okay. So as a summary, three fourths is equivalent to nine twelfths. We got that from over here. And it's also equivalent to fifteen twentieths. They're all equivalent. Now what we would do, you might be asked to tell whether two fractions are or are not equivalent. So you might start with an example like this. Uh, let's say five-sixths, take that fraction. Is it or is it not equivalent to ten-eighteenths? Okay. In this case you're going to want to look at your numerators and your denominators and see do they have the same multiplication relationship like we just saw on the previous slide? So 5 parts to 10 parts. 10 parts is twice as many as 5 parts. That's 2 times as many. And 18 parts in the whole is actually, it's not 2 times as many as 6. 18 is 3 times as many as 6. So you can see my numerators have a multiplication relationship of 2 times and my denominators of three times. And because that is not the same multiplication relationship, I will say that these two fractions are inequivalent. I get that by drawing an equal sign and putting a slash through it because they don't have the same multiplication relationship. Let's try one more. Let's say I had the fraction, um, let's take one-fourth and two eighths. Again, let's look for a multiplication relationship. I usually start with the numerators or I might start with the denominators. Sometimes you can only start with the one that has an obvious multiplication relationship. So let's start with the denominators. Four parts, eight parts. Well, eight parts is two times as many parts as four parts. So the denominators have a relationship of times two. Two parts is twice as many as one part. So my numerators actually have a times two relationship. One times two is two. Four times two is eight. I have the same multiplication relationship. So are these fractions going to be equivalent or inequivalent? That's right, they're going to be equivalent because they have the same multiplication relationship. Here are some word problems that you can practice uh, with practicing using multiplication to generate equivalent fractions. And these are the same questions from the first lesson, from chapter six, lesson one. But if you'd like to try them again, maybe with this a little bit of a different strategy, you can pause the video at any time and give them a try. I'll scroll through them so you can pause. Whoa, skip one. Here's the second one. And again, just pause it if you'd like to solve it. Here's the third one. Notice in this problem they say that Ben walked to three-fourths of a mile to Ming's house. Sarah walked the same distance to Ming's house. They don't say her fraction of a mile. And they ask you how far she walked. Well, they said the same distance. That means you're looking for a fraction that is equivalent to three-fourths. Equivalent, same. Here's another. Here's an example where her recipe calls for one half cup of flour, but her measuring cup only measures in fourths. So you have to find out how many fourths are equivalent to one half. 
and here's the last one. All right, so have fun multiplying. Be careful with those multiplication relationships. Have fun.